Good afternoon. My name is Peter Murphy Lewis. I'm the host of LTC Heroes, a podcast only about long term care aimed at uh, executives and helping them overcome. Uh, difficult challenge with unparalleled solutions. And today I'm joined by Bob Spielman and Mary Francis. And today we are launching a new program called Short Stories from the Frontline of Long-Term Care. Uh, so to get things started, uh, I want to just start with an icebreaker. Mary Francis, tell me how long you've been in long-term care and what you do. I'm an SDNA. And I've been in long-term care for 30, 30 plus years. And, and what was your first day like in long-term care? Do you remember it? What, what, were you nervous? Tell, tell me what you were feeling, if you can remember those emotions. My first day was scary, it was a happy one. And I had no idea what I was stepping into. <laughs> and, and now that you know what you're stepping into, uh, what do you think about long-term care? Why are you still here 30 plus years later? I have no regrets about the decision I made to be in long-term care, the interaction with the residents. I just love people. You learn more from the resident than you give to them. So I love that. And Bob, you've known Mary Francis for uh, for a while now. Uh, can you tell me about your all's relationship and how you got to know each other? Yeah, so I went to her facility and I asked at the time, I said, who's your best uh, nursing assistant there? And they said, Mary Francis, hands down. And I said, well, I'd love to work with her. And so I started working with her and just the love she exudes toward the residents. And um, you never feel like she's doing work. You just feel like she's, loving our people. And I was just so proud. Um, I know her, her, a couple of her kids are uh, nurses and they said, mom, go back to school and get your degree and become a nurse. And she said, listen, you do what you love. I'm doing what I love. <laughs> and you guys are my degree, she said. And so I just, that moved my heart. <laughs> and then uh, she also told me one time that uh, anytime she leaves the building and she always asked herself in the drive home, did I do my very best? And she said, if I ever answer no, I turn my car around and I head back to the facility and I make it right. And that's just, to me, that is the epitome of great healthcare workers. And, and when I think of somebody incredible like that, I think of Mary Francis. Mary Francis, this is the second time that Bob has told me this beautiful story. And it's the second time uh, that he's been moved emotionally what do you feel or what do you hear when you, uh, when you hear his words and his, you know, uh, appreciation for what you do? I feel very thankful. I feel very grateful. I feel grateful that someone appreciates what I do. I feel thankful that someone also, Bob is not, when he came here, he said he, he went to a nursing assistant. He learned nursing assistant. So when he came, he wanted to be put with someone to see what our day was like. And I told him, I'm so glad that he came because you cannot tell your kids, don't do this. You have to know what, what they're doing. And Bob showed compassion he shows that he wanted to know what we were going through. So I appreciated that. And I told him, each time I leave work, I ask myself, did I do my work, my job, according to the best of my ability? If my answer is no, I have to make it right. That means I did something wrong. That means I made someone unhappy. Hmm. But if my answer is yes, I sleep like a baby. <laughs> Mary Francis, uh, I, have, I have a feeling that you are an old soul and a young body and that you came to long-term care with this passion even before long-term care taught you something about yourself. That being said, what have you learned from long-term care? I've learned so much over the years. Like I said, you learn more from the residents 
than you gave to them. I've learned that the golden rule of life, you have to treat others as you would like to be treated. Mm. You treat them with respect, you treat them with dignity, you have compassion above all because we're not working in a grocery store. We are working with humans. They have feelings. Mary Frances, um, by, by your accent, um, I don't think that you're from the United States. And as a US citizen, I feel really blessed that you're here taking care of our, our, our elderly. Where are you from? And tell me a little bit about your history of how you got into long-term care. Okay, I was born in Liberia, West Africa. I graduated from high school in New York City. And then after New York, I came, well, I'll make a long story short. I came to Columbus, Ohio. I wanted to be a singer, but I came to Columbus, Ohio to go to school. I went to Franklin University majoring accounting. And as I, I guess I was good with figures. So one, either one of the professors or the president of the school at the time, Dr. Frash, put me in touch with a company. And I was working to get my accounting knowledge and everything. Then the company decided to move to Virginia Beach, West Virginia. I did not want to go because of my family. So I stayed back. As a result, I was unemployed. And after a couple of months, a friend told me there was a facility. She didn't know what it did there. But why not try it instead of waiting to just get dressed up and go to work? So when I came, I got interviewed and got hired. At the time, you didn't have to be state tested. We were the first group to take the SDNA test back in the 90s. And in terms and, of, I'm sorry, go ahead. And, you know, so when I came and got hired, I realized that I love people more than sitting behind a desk and working with figures or numbers. They make your day. They make you happy. They make you laugh. And when you're sad, they can figure it out. I come to work in the morning. If I'm not smiling or acting stupid, the rest of them will ask me, what's wrong with you? You know, I always act stupid for them. I sing, how much is that doggy in the window? Ow, ow, woof, woof. They love it. You, know? my, you my... have to bring happiness to them. This is their home. Mm. And for some, it's very sad. I see myself in the residence. We don't know where life is going to take us. Is, is uh, How long did it take for you to realize that you wanted to work in long-term care for the rest of your life? <laughs> Not too long, probably about a year. Mm. And you said that first day was a little bit scary. What was scary about that first day? Well... I have never done the job before. So they put me with a lady to train me, Rosemary Bazzuri. And she took me from room to room and told me this resident is this way, this resident is that way. You know, so it was kind of scary. But then I had in the back of my mind, the DON was the one who interviewed me at the time and hired me. She asked me, have you done this job before? I said, no. She said, do you have any kids? I said, yes. She said, they are like your kids. You treat them with love, compassion. You bathe them. You cut up their food. Some you have to feed. And she was 100% right. 
Mm. Mm. You know, Peter, I, the, the beautiful thing too that I remember about Mary Frances is she takes all these lessons over the years and for her to mentor a new STNA or CNA that's just coming into the field with no experience, her love for her uh, fellow employees is just amazing. She takes these life lessons and she makes sure that the next group, the next generation of, of, of nursing assistants are properly trained and, and she loves on them like they're her own kids. And that's just mm -hmm. makes me really proud. Those are, those are great words to hear. Mary Frances, I, if I were being trained by you on day one, I'd be a little bit intimidated by your passion. I feel like you know your purpose. You know how to take care of your people. What advice would you give to uh, a CNA on their first day and why they should, why they should stick it out and what they're going to learn here? I will tell them to be natural, be themselves, but treat your job seriously. I don't remember in the number of years I've worked here, I cannot remember how many times I've called off. I cannot remember how many times I've been late. My late father, peace be to his ashes, told me, even if you sweep in the streets, take it seriously. Someone might see you sweeping the street and say, I like the way that lady is sweeping the street. My parents gave me a lot of memories that I continue to carry on. And so if, if you were to be with me on your first day, I don't want you to be intimidated. Mm. I want you to be your natural self, but I will observe your reaction with you and the residents. Mm. What's one of the most memorable, memorable, memorable days that you've had, Mary Frances? Oh boy. It could be hard, it can be heavy, it can be beautiful. Well, to be frank with you, the more than most memorable is when you work with someone, not necessarily work with, even when you are around someone and they pass away, it's very painful. You go home, I don't know. When you leave your job, when I leave, let me put myself, when I leave, if they're sick, I think about them. If they're getting worse, I think about them. We just had a resident that passed. Each time I walk in his room, his wife will be sitting there. Sometimes she sleep here all night in a chair. She will be sitting there, I knock on the door, I ask her, you want a cup of coffee? She says, sure, last night the kitchen gave me coffee. I say, okay, I'll go get you some. But her husband will lay there and not say a word. And I stand by the bed, I rub his arm. I say, good morning, John. He opens his eyes, he turns and say, morning. And she say, what? He has not said nothing to me and he talking to you. So I will give her a signal like, wash my eyes. He got two wives, you and me. You know, I mean, it, there's so many memorable things, but painful, the, the saddest is to see them pass mm -hmm. because you no longer see them. Mm -hmm. The happiest is to see them with smiles on their faces. What's one thing ab about long-term care that you wish everyone understood? Long-term care has gotten a bad, some bad press in the last year and last two years. And it's important that we talk about the great things of long-term care. What's one thing that you wished other people understood about our industry? I wish a lot of people could understand the weight that the workers of long-term care carry. You are with that patient. If you work eight hours, you with them for eight hours. If you work 12, you with them for 12 hours. And 
The job is hard. It's not sitting behind a desk. It's a hard job because you're working with people that may not want you to be bother to bother them, but they're not doing it intentionally. When someone is sick, they might react differently. That's why I say I see myself in them. <laughs> you know, so the thing here is people need to understand that anyone in long-term care, they're not just there. Yes, we do work for, for money, but they're not just the majority. I would say 90% of the people or 99.9% are people who care. Mm -hmm. And if and even when the families come at you, they're frustrated because they can't do what you do, or they wish they had their loved ones at home, but it's not possible. So when they come at you, you have to understand they're coming from a different angle. You know. Mary Francis, uh, there's going to be some, some people who are going to watch this interview and they're going to want to meet you. Where can we find you working? When's your next shift? Um, and uh, so we can reach out to you. Of course, I'm at McNaughton Point. Where is that? 1425 Yorkland Road. Come on, City, on. City Columbus, and State. Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Bob, I, I want to say thank you for to Mary Frances for sharing her story today. Is there anything you'd like to add before we sign off? I just, my heart, my heart's full. I mean, these are the people that give their lives to our residents. And I just want to be worthy of, of, of being their employer and, and making them proud because they sure make me proud every day. So thank you. Thank Mary, you, Mary. Frances, you're making us all tear up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Laugh. How much is that dog? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Mary Francis. Mary Francis, you have a great day. You too.